Hello, I'm Blade Boquest, and this is the third video of Blade Edge Episode 6. So we started breaking them down into about 10 minute parts to kind of get better bite-sized information towards you guys. You've already seen what a great life skiller he is. Now I found a way to kind of improve his farming two to three times, as well as basically just increase some of his overall production by 20%. So you'll want to take a look at this. We're going over a bunch of alchemy fruits that are going to be pretty relevant depending on what server you're on. And also, this is really good groundwork before the next video in this series where we compare cooking versus alchemy. So you definitely want to catch this one and don't miss the next two. So you make you have 10 by 10 farms. How much contribution do you have right now? Three, I have zero uh, for a total of 317. 317, that's a good job. That's really quite good. Okay, cool. All right, let me double check something on the market here, and then I'm gonna get you buying some stuff. How much extra silver do you have just laying around? Right now I have about 350 mil. Oof, all right. We'll have to stretch that pretty thin, but we'll make it work. All right, so there are elixirs of remarkable will on the market. <clears throat> there are blue ones right there. Uh, there's 642 of them, grab them all. Nice, okay. So that's a really good opportunity. Whenever I saw that, I almost bought them, but then I was like, you know what, I'll actually have you walk through this scenario. That's kind of the object here. So that is one of three components that go into drafts. Now, I know that you're a farmer right now. Let's tie farming into alchemy into kind of end game alchemy. There's really a tremendous amount of profit, sorry, to be had from this. With your farms, what is it that you're producing right now? I've been doing magical wheat. <laughs> mainly because I, okay. I was focused on trying to go for T9 attempts, but I was breeding everything and pouring everything into the T9 attempts. Right. I haven't really been doing anything else with them, and I'm, I've am i actually been looking to see what I could possibly do with that. Okay, so there's a couple things. So number one, that's fine. If you just want to not necessarily focus on making silver, but really just get your T9 horse, that's an awesome goal. So absolutely. The way to actually do a better job of that is to not make wheat, but to make purple mushrooms. So purple mushrooms are going to cycle quicker. So rather than using wheat, your purple mushrooms, you're just going to have more breed attempts throughout the day. And it'll probably up your T9 production by like 10 or 15%. Should definitely be helpful. Um, are you using organic fertilizer right now? No. Oh, dude, you're going to love this. Okay, so this is the best thing ever. So let's see if it's just on the market. Organic. Hope it is. It's a pain to make otherwise. Spell organic correctly. Uh, yeah, you're in luck. All right, so there's organic fertilizer on the market. Grab, like, I mean, a good amount, at least a couple hundred. Doesn't look like they're getting sold out, so you can just grab a couple hundred. So what you do with this is you stand in between your farms. So if you have, like, a four by four farm setup where it's like four squares and it makes a bigger square you stand in the middle of them and you just click on organic fertilizer in your inventory and it's going to make all of your crops f speed up by 20 percent that's pretty nice oh yeah oh yeah and when it comes to the, either the money you're getting from t9 mats or it comes from the actual you know, just T9 attempts, it's gonna be so much faster. So wheat generally is an hour longer than purple mushrooms. And purple mushrooms then sped up another 20%. You're basically gonna be able to do a full 100 plant crop harvest every two and a half hours. And that's, and I'm, I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot for saying this, that's without workers set on it. Uh, no, it's okay. That is with workers set on it so okay. that they would, um, you know, keep it, keep it going. But you can obviously just prune it on your own. I think that's a fine way to go. Where are your farms right now? I have them all sitting on the, the riverbank south of Heidel on the other side. That way it's just a straight line for me to go down. Yeah, okay. So that's going to need to change. Um, <laughs> so I made a farming guide actually last year and um, some people probably watched it and then kind of missed or mixed up some of the information. Um, maybe whoever recommended that you farm down there told you the wrong thing. 
So if you're planting south of Heidel, that has one of the highest water saturations in the game. So if you actually click on the top of your map and you click on the little water thing, I don't know if you've looked at the water gauge before. Nope. Alright, so click on that, it's a little rain droplet when you're looking at the map. And look at, look at Heidel, look at south of Heidel. See all that water? Okay, so the way this works is whenever you plant a crop and you examine it personally, it will give you a little like range of where the water needs to be. And if the water, if the groundwater is even slightly over that, it makes it so that you, the plants get tangled all the time and it slows down uh, the growth basically overall. So there are two competing systems for farming. So one of them is south of Heidel. And what that would do is basically allow you to prune more than any other place in the game. So you're just constantly pruning, especially purple mushrooms. And if you're always pruning, that's not going to give you T9 mats and it's not going to give you a lot of money. It's going to give you farming XP. So it's the best way to power level the farming life skill in the game. But it is not conducive for the best T9 mats. So instead, for T9 mats, what you'd want to do is go right, uh, right over to Logia Farm. Now the reason gotcha. the reason Logia Farm is so good, uh, number one, it's pretty easy to get to. It's really not that far, especially if you just have a farming alt. That could be fine to just level that guy up and have him manage it. But uh, the 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 heat, the temperature, is just going to have the cycles much faster, much faster than below Heidel. Doesn't have standing gr groundwater, and that's when you're going to be able to get ten farms with a hundred purple mushrooms and breeding them for T9 mats with organic fertilizer and this kind of heat every two and a half hours. That is a crazy amount. You could technically, not that you're gonna be awake this long or do it, but you could basically have 10 different cycles in a day. And I mean, that's so many T9 attempts more than what you're having before. Right. Cool, so definitely make those notes. Anything you want me to repeat on that stuff? I'm not sure if you have a notebook and you're grabbing these. No, I've these. been taking notes on the side. Great, okay, cool. Very good. Um, so how many Fruit of the Suns do you have? Just what was in the screenshot right now? Let me take the second look. I, I believe I've been saving them since then. Okay. What I've normally been, been doing is just selling them as extra profit. So I haven't been doing a whole lot of... Uh, oh god, you've been alchemy. selling them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in total I have about 400. Oh, that's really, really good, dude. Oh man, that's so much money. That's like... Uh, that can probably get you... I mean, ballpark, maybe an extra 500 a billion silver. Oh, wow. And not that much time, yeah, so that'll be good. So hang on to that. Uh, let me see what the price is for the sun right now. Uh, yeah, you'd never want to sell them at that price. That's almost worth buying. Are you aware of what the profit fruits are? Probably not, right? No. Okay. So Crimson Flame is one of the profit fruits fruit of nature, fruit of sun, and fruit of magical power. So those are the four that you want to hold on to at all times. So especially after tonight, we're going to do some alchemy and get you really understanding those good systems. The other fruits you can pretty much sell. Things like fruit of abundance, fruit of enhancement, perfection, destruction. They all have their uses, but for the most part, they're just not worth your time. So a lot of people will buy those because they're necessary to make T2 elephant mats or for T2 elephants. So that's kind of what drives the market that way. So, you know, I see kind of all the fruits in your bank. So you can get rid of those, keep the four fruits though that I talked about that go into profit. And I'm sorry, real quick. Mm -hmm. I, I was typing and yeah, no problem. too loud yeah. for the fourth one. I had uh, Crimson Flame, Nature, Sun, and... And Magic Power. Yep, no problem. So the reason these things are so profitable is because each one of those goes into a different type of oil. Each one of those oils uh, generally goes into a very expensive elixir, and then those elixirs go into drafts, and those draft and those elixirs are basically the bottleneck behind the draft. So it typically comes down to how many fruits you can get, and then of course the traces that correspond to each one of those elixirs. It's not an easy thing to try to mass produce all the drafts. It's a complex system, you know, even with my empire at the moment, that's not something you would focus on necessarily. But by stockpiling them over the course of time, what that's gonna do is eventually, once you get it down, 
you can just kind of batch out okay i'm gonna i'm gonna run through these elixirs and then i'm gonna buy the other components rather than make them and i'm gonna produce this draft today and that way like every three or four months whenever you get a stockpile these fruits from your gathering or whatever it is that you've been getting them from uh, you can run through an extremely high amount of silver per hour that can't really be replicated and can't really be repeated so it's just kind of this would be along the lines of interval income and other sources of interval income would be workshops, but I don't want to go over that as much right now.